Want to know just how much fun it's possible to have in a ferociously fast small Super Mini? Then try one of these, Ford's Fiesta ST. It's been developed like a proper performance car and drives like one, ready to paint a smile upon your face corner after corner. Of course, for not much more than the affordable prices Ford asks, you can buy more power. But after driving one of these, you probably won't want to. We've never had a truly great sporting Ford Fiesta. The Blue Oval brand has tried, of course, building up a hot hatch legacy around this model that dates all the way back to the very first XR2 of 1981, a history subsequently embellished by the more powerful RS1800 and RS Turbo models that followed it. All, though, were eclipsed by French hot hatch rivals. First, a series of small Peugeot GTIs, then in more recent years, the Renault Sport Clio. Today's Fiesta ST, this car must take on uh, ever more sophisticated versions of those same two rivals, along with a whole host of other similarly powered shopping rockets developing anything between 170 and 200 PS. It's going to have to be good. But it just might be. For one thing, it's based on the best handling Super Mini of its kind, which has to help. For another, Ford has had an awful long time to get it right. This seventh generation Fiesta dates all the way back to 2008, but it was the spring of 2013 before this, the first of the properly quick versions, hit the market. Unlike its rivals, the Blue Oval has not one but several performance badges up its sleeve when it comes to cars of this sort. ST, or Sports Technologies, being company speak for quick but not concussive. A performance level that sits just above fast but family friendly ZTEC S models, but just below track spec RS derivatives. A badge, in other words, promising mild madras rather than vindaloo, and one applied to the kind of car a red blooded racer could enjoy but still use every day. Designed by enthusiasts to be driven by enthusiasts, this fast Fiesta's poised, priced to sell, and with 182 PS on tap, plenty quick enough. Potentially, it's the best car of its kind that Ford has ever bought us, and we're gonna put it to the test. It isn't often with a small hot hatch that the engineers get things absolutely right. Either compromises are made for day-to-day -day usability that rob you of that last ultimate nth of response when you're really pushing on, or you get a race-bred rocket that loves a smooth circuit but so firm that it simply gets on your nerves in everyday motoring. With this ST, the balance between these two extremes is as good as it's probably ever going to be. As for why, well, let's get down to the detail. You realize that there's something special about this car after the first 30 seconds of driving it. It's a little firmly sprung, yes, but bearably so, and there's a terrier-like feel to the way that it just wants to go, straining at a leash controlled by your right foot. Pricier, pokier hot hatches dilute this eager appeal with modern technology. Paddle shift transmissions, four-wheel drive, electronic damping systems. Here there's none of that, which isn't to say that high-tech cleverness is entirely absent. On the contrary, things have moved on quite a bit since the previous two-litre Fiesta ST was launched in 2005. For a start, the engine is now one of Ford's new generation EcoBoost units, able to deliver more power from lower capacities that develop more efficient emissions. So, a 2 litre unit that put out 150 PS is here replaced by a 1.6 litre engine developing 182 PS, which is impressive but still not quite up to the 200 PS level offered by both this model's closest two rivals, Peugeot's 208 GTI and the Renault Sport Clio 2. Or at least it is on paper. In practice, there's no difference at all, thanks to the fact that this Fiesta has an overboost function, enabling it to deliver 200 PS for 15 second acceleration bursts just when you want it. That's why it's 0 to 62 mile an hour sprint time of 6.9 seconds is virtually identical to that of the two rivals that I've just mentioned. 
The top speed of 137 miles an hour isn't too far shy either. So, lack of power to properly compete at the top of the junior hot hatch sector isn't actually the problem I thought it might be coming into this test. Quite the opposite, actually. Mount Tune, the people who engineered the Ford GT supercar, have developed a factory-approved engine pack that, for only a few hundred pounds extra, increases the output to 215 PS and boosts torque, pulling power from 290 to 320 newton meters, enough to shave nearly a second from the all-important 31 to 62 mile an hour fourth gear acceleration increment. It's improved to just 5.7 seconds, which is quick enough to seriously bother far more powerful hot hatches from the next division up, all for a total price that still saves you loads over the Renault and Peugeot competition. But power, of course, is nothing without control, which is exactly where this Fiesta really shines. The suspension features stiffer springs and has been lowered by 15 millimeters, just enough to wring the most out of what is already a brilliant chassis and deliver a level of cornering poise that makes the rival Peugeot, for one, feel a bit soft and compromised. This little Ford's been described as the anti-supercar driver's car, which means essentially that day to day in the real world on real public roads, you'd probably have more fun in one of these than in something seriously exotic. The reasons why really speak uh, of the depth of development that's gone into this ST. Take the beautifully slick six-speed manual gearbox, for example, or the all-round disc brakes, a Fiesta First. And all these elements were honed to perfection by hundreds and hundreds of tire-squealing kilometers around the fearsome Nürburgring Nordschleife racetrack in Germany. That's where they got the steering just right. Even though you don't get a variable ratio setup like that fitted to the larger Focus ST, brilliant reserves of feel and a faster ratio rack make this one of the very best electric setups I've tried. And it's where particular efforts were diverted towards the clever ETVC torque vectoring system that lightly breaks the inside wheel as you turn, transferring power to the outside wheel where grip is needed and enabling quite astonishing mid-corner speed that fires you from bend to bend. You don't feel it happening, you just point, plant and go and feel like a better driver than you probably are. I found that all the very best sporting cars flatter you in that way. Torque vectoring continues on even if you want to be a bit of a hooligan and turn the electronic stability program either partly or fully off so that the back end starts swinging about when you lift off or brake. A neat my key function enables you to disable this option should you lend the car out. I know I would. It even lets you restrict the volume of the stereo, which you ought to be doing anyway because the engine sounds so good. That's courtesy of a clever sound symposer system that filters the most attractive noises from under the bonnet and delivers them into the cabin under hard acceleration when you want to hear them. A stimulating soundtrack for a stimulating drive. Now, it's easy to go overboard and get all max power when it comes to a car of this kind. A temptation Ford has thankfully resisted here. This isn't the prettiest junior shopping rocket you can buy, but it is playfully purposeful in demeanor. The business end dominated by a black honeycomb mesh version of the facelifted seventh generation Fiesta's distinctive Aston Martin-like trapezoidal front grille. It sits below a sculpted bonnet and just above a deep chin spoiler, both of which set the tone for a sporty three-door only silhouette that's clothed in a unique ST body kit. Design that's especially purposeful here at the rear with its rooftop spoiler and lower diffuser through which peep a pair of chromed dual exhaust pipes. Things aren't quite so overt once you take a seat inside. Go for a base trim version and you don't even get the two things that most set the cabin apart. The rather hidden dash mounted starter button and these lovely grippy Recaro seats that you get in this plush uh, ST2 model. Other ST specific features are a little more subtle. 
there's alloy trim for the gear lever and pedals, and ST badges on the steering wheel and on the front door scuff plates. Oh, and the traction control function, which in lesser Fiestas would be hidden in one of the infotainment system submenus, uh, it's given its own prominent position on the center console. Otherwise, of course, apart from a slightly more purposeful look for the deeply cowled instruments, it's all normal Fiesta fare, which means that it all works fine, but doesn't feel of super high quality. If you have an issue with that, then bear in mind the affordable pricing. Generally, I'm happy with the way it is, though the multimedia screen that dominates the dash top could be a bit larger. No complaints about the shiny Sony branded stereo you get on this plusher model though. Plus, it's nice to get a properly round rather than flat bottomed steering wheel in this class of car for a change. And this leather trimmed three spoker feels great to hold. And rear seat space? Well, it's better than the claustrophobically rising belt line of this three door only design might lead you to expect. True, these heavily bolstered Recaros do, as you saw, slightly hinder your access into the back. But once you're there, with the Fiesta surprises with headroom manageable even for a six footer, though his or her legs will be crushed pretty snugly against this seat in front. Luggage room, meanwhile, is much more class competitive than that of the larger Focus model, though the 276 litre total is a fraction down on rival Peugeot 208 GTI and Renault Sport Clear models. If that's not enough, you can of course push forward the split folding rear bench, and although because the backrest simply flops onto the seat squab, uh, it doesn't give you a completely flat floor, it does free up 960 litres of fresh air. Looking for a junior hot hatch with about 180 PS on tap? Then you'd expect to be looking at list pricing somewhere in the 18 to 19,000 pound bracket, the norm for a shopping rocket of this sort, but not here. Ford chose to undercut most of its key rivals by between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds by launching this car at around 17,000 pounds. So if you're looking at one, you may well have enough left in your budget to find the extra 1,000 pounds necessary to stretch to the plusher ST2 version that I've got here. There's only a single three-door body style on offer. The US is the only global market being offered a five-door version. But what about those rivals? Well, if you believe the motoring press, who always focus on the newest and shiniest options, there really are only two, Peugeot's 208 GTI and the Renault Sport Clio 200, both £2,000 more than this Fiesta, but both with slightly more power, 200 PS, though it isn't enough to make either significantly quicker. This Ford's advantage over this pair is about more than price, though. Most agree that the Peugeot isn't as sharp to drive, while the Renault can only be had with the kind of automatic gearbox that will instantly disqualify it in the minds of many enthusiasts. Manufacturers usually fit auto transmission to cars of this kind because they don't have a manual box that can take the torque of the powerful engines required in this sector. Now that's been the problem for the Volkswagen group of brands, which accounts for the auto-only 180 PS supercharged and turbocharged engine used by the Seat Ibiza Cupra, the Skoda Fabia VRS, the Volkswagen Polo GTI, and the top version of Audi's A1 1.4 TFSI. Now all of these on paper have the performance, if not the ultimate handling subtlety, to take on this Fiesta, but it comes down to whether you really want to access that speed via a set of flappy steering wheel paddles, and whether you want to pay high list pricing. Even the Skoda is a few hundred pounds more than this Ford, while the Seat, the Volkswagen and the Audi sit, in ascending order, in the 19 to 21,000 pound bracket. For all the reasons I've mentioned then, I wouldn't personally consider any of the rivals I've so far mentioned as being quite the same as this little Fiesta. Closer is Vauxhall's Corsa VXR, but that's £2,000 more and much thirstier and dirtier. 
Ultimately though, I think the spirit and sheer joie de vivre of this ST is best replicated not by a hot hatch version of a super mini, but by a max power version of something smaller. Say a Fiat 500, a Bath 595, a Mini Cooper S, or the top hot hatch version of Afro Romeo's Mito, the Quadrifoglio Verde. All huge fun and all priced in the 18 to 19,000 pound bracket, but pretty impractical in terms of rear seat and luggage space. If, having considered all of this, you come to the same conclusion as many buyers in this segment and decide that Ford has produced an unequaled value, handling and performance proposition here, what exactly can you expect for your money in terms of standard spec? And the answer is actually quite a lot. Let's start with some of the things that you might expect. 17 inch alloy wheels, a body styling kit with a chromed dual exhaust pipe, a quick clear heated front windscreen, uh, front fog lights, a Thatcham category one alarm, um, a leather trimmed ST steering wheel and gear shift knob with red stitching, plus a decent quality stereo system incorporating a DAB digital radio. Now for the more unusual features. A sound symposer that filters the most attractive engine noises from under the bonnet and delivers them into the cabin. Then there's the Ford Sync voice control and in-car connectivity system with emergency assistance. It makes connecting in Bluetooth phones and other electronic devices a cinch and in an accident will automatically call the emergency services for help, alerting them to your exact location. Finally, there's Ford MyKey, which enables owners, when allowing others to drive the car, to set maximum speed and audio volume limits and ensure that safety features are not disabled. So you really could loan your ST out to your teenage son or daughter with a bit of extra peace of mind. Here I've got the plush ST2 model that over 90% of UK buyers tend to choose. For an extra £1,000 this adds halogen projector style headlamps with LED daytime running lights privacy glass, a power starter button, an upgraded Sony audio system, and probably most importantly, a lovely grippy set of Recaro sports seats. Options? Well, there's not a flappy paddle auto gearbox alternative. Good. You can pay extra for the ST Style Pack that adds smarter five-spoke alloys finished in radio grey, red brake calipers and illuminated scuff plates. Personally though, I'd do without that in favour of the Ford approved Mount Tune engine upgrade that for an extra £600 boosts power to 215 PS. As for safety, well, you can expect to find all the usual electronic assistance features for braking and traction, plus rear disc brakes and enhanced torque vectoring control to help you get the power down out of corners. There's also hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, plus a three-stage ESC stability control system that, thank goodness, you can fully turn off if you want to. If that's still not enough to keep you out of the hedge, then you'll be glad of driver and passenger front airbags, side airbags with thorax protection, and curtain airbags with head protection. There's even an airbag to protect the driver's knees. Tire pressure monitoring is optional. All of these active and passive features are coordinated by an intelligent protection system for maximum effectiveness. It's all enough to guarantee Ford's usual five-star Euro NCAP safety showing. The whole point of Sporty Fiestas has been to offer a generous slice of fun coupled with modest running costs, a trend which continues with this generation ST. Even with 182 PS on tap, you'll still see 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, with emissions pegged at a very reasonable 138 grams per kilometre. Perhaps it's not coincidental that those figures are virtually identical to those that you'll achieve from rivals like Peugeot's 208 GTI, Seat's Ibiza Cupra, the Volkswagen Polo GTI and the Mini Cooper S. They're slightly better though than a rival Renault Sport Clio 200 and a lot better than a Vauxhall Corsa VXR. 
The inherent efficiency of the EcoBoost 1.6 litre engine certainly helps this Fiesta's cause, as does Ford's recent design focus on reducing body weight despite an increase in size. There's also a shift indicator on the dash for more efficient gear changes. Keep an eye on it, and for the times when you're not behaving like a hooligan, over 40 miles per gallon should be achievable on a regular basis. What else? Uh, maintenance? Well, it's a shame that you don't get the fixed price servicing program option that some of this car's competitors offer. And if you're thinking of doing uh, a few track days, and so much fun is this car that it'd be a shame not to, uh, you need to remember to budget for extra wear on brake pads, discs, and tires. That only leaves depreciation. If you're a prospective customer, then you'll be glad to hear that Fiesta residual values are on the up, as both new and used markets respond well to the increase in quality of the latest generation car. Expect to get around 50% of your initial purchase price back after three years, which is basically unheard of for a Fiesta. Finally, insurance. It's Group 30E. After three decades of trying, Ford has at last assumed market leadership in the junior hot hatch segment. That's the headline news with this second generation Fiesta ST. It'll be a bestseller on merit. This really is a special little car, usable every day but as focused as you could want when your favourite road opens up and you can flex your right foot sink into the grippy Recaros and dial up a responsible amount of red mist. I'd also honestly say that it's pretty much the only car in its segment that's ultimately rewarding enough to consider taking on a track day, which I think says everything. The difference, if you like, between a super mini with skirts, spoilers and a more powerful engine and a properly developed performance car. Which is what this is, as much a go-to choice in its market sector as a Porsche 911 would be if you were looking for a performance sports car, or a Lotus Elise might be for those in search of a roadster. Uh, in all honesty, you'd have far more fun in this little Ford on a public road than you ever could in something pricier and more powerful. Think of it as one up for the common man, small perhaps in price and performance, but big in smiles per mile, which at the end of the day is exactly what a hot hatch should really be all about. <laughs>